Subtitled A Tale from the Crib. Yes, dear fans, I've got a real nursery crime for you this time. It's all about the humble beginnings of my favorite horror hero. So call the babysitter and break out the bath bags as I narrate a nauseating novella with a very special place in my heart. I affectionately call this one Lower Birth. <laughs> And girls, step right up and be prepared to gasp, to swoon, to feast your disbelieving eyes on the most astounding array of freaks and oddities ever gathered together under one tent. See the piteous products of God's twisted sense of humor. View with your very eyes the alarming consequences of nature's most heinous miscalculations. Witness, if you dare, the results of the most unnatural inbreeding. Man or monster, human or horror, you be the judge and jury. See Fanny the fat lady, over 450 pounds of bovine beauty. Pay a visit to the Littles, a family so small they live in a shoebox. Witness the stupefying skull face, a living human skeleton. And finally, our star attraction, the amazing Enoch. A display so bizarre, you have to see it with your very self-same eyes to believe it. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, step right up right this way. A one thin dime, a tenth part of a dollar, you may avail yourself of this fantastic exhibit. Right this way, sir, watch your step. No rush, there'll be plenty of room for all. And we shall have repeated showings until every man, woman, and child can avail themselves of this interesting and educational exhibit. Step lively, sir, that's the idea. Feely's fantastic fairway of freak. Showtime now beginning. Enough! Enough! What do you think you're doing? Eh? You're a naughty boy! You hear me? Naughty! Come on, get up! Come on! Come on! Introducing Fanny the Fat Lady! <laughs> Stay there, yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, the Littles. How'd you get out of there? Huh? Tell me. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, the star attraction at Feely's fantastic fairway of freaks. The most alarming and unusual oddity ever to be put on display anywhere, anytime, any place. No, no more. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, look upon Enoch, the two-faced man. How many times, Sickles? How many times do I have to tell you to get him in his cage before showtime? Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Feely. I don't know how he gets out. Uh, it won't happen again. Of that, you may be sure, Mr. Sickles, because the next time it does happen, then I shall be happy to discuss with you the retirement of your most amazing Enoch. Now, oh, wait a minute, Mr. Feely. Without me and Enoch, you're no different than any other two-bit sideshow. 
He's the only thing you got that's different. Enoch is special. Enoch is dying. Did you really think you could bribe the company doctor to keep it from me? Well, apparently your freak isn't the only one with two faces, is he? No sickles, your meal ticket's godforsaken life is winding toward a merciful end. So please don't tell me how much I need you. We'll play it out as long as it takes, a month, a week. But as long as you own him, then I own you. And we do things my way. Understand, Mr. Sickles? How'd you get in here? The door, Mr. Sickles. Call me unconventional. <laughs> How about I call a policeman? Oh, I don't think you want to do that. Oh, no, why not? Because, Mr. Sickles, I'm your salvation. That's why. Dr. Zachary Kling, at your service. Please. Please. Don't let me interrupt your supper. At your service, you say. What kind of service may that be? Well, let's not be coy, Mr. Sickles. I overheard your, shall we say, altercation with the owner. It seems your days here may be numbered. Do correct me if I'm wrong. Well, what of it? Well, it just so happens I've recently made an acquisition. An acquisition from which we both might benefit, if you take my meaning. What kind of acquisition? <laughs> Are you a card player, Mr. Sickles? Now and again. Myself, I must confess to a certain, shall we say, jealousy for games of chance. I was playing a gentleman in St. Louis recently. As it happens, a gentleman of distinction on two counts. One, he was an archaeologist by trade, and secondly, he couldn't play poker for shit. <laughs> when it became clear that this gentleman was going to owe me quite a large sum of money, not strictly in his possession, it became imminently clear that something of equal worth would have to be bartered as collateral. Her name's Mirana, Mr. Sickles. Though uh, I prefer Myrna, don't you? <laughs> Egyptian slave girl, it was explained to me. Buried alive at 16 for repelling the pharaoh's advances. Rather a high price for playing hard to get, wouldn't you say? <laughs> never able to love. Never able to bear children. Never able to have a normal life. It's sad, really. She's yours for a 60-40 split. Do we have a deal or not? What's the catch? I'm afraid I don't follow you. It's a business of playing people for suckers. Don't play me for one. What do you need me for? Why don't you go straight to Philly? Mr. Sickles, as I said, I'm a gambling man. I play to win, and winners tend to make enemies, if you take my meaning. In all candor, I need to keep a low profile for a while. The less official my connection with this sideshow, the better. What about the jewels? Oh, completely worthless, Mr. Sickles, a mere prop. 